Have you ever read the book Animal Farm by George Orwell? Well, if you haven't, Animal Farm tells the story of a bunch of mistreated animals who rise up, drive away the humans, and take over a farm for themselves. Basic premise aside, it's ultimately an allegory to support Orwell's argument against corrupt governments. Anyway, the animals develop a slogan stating, Four legs good, two legs bad. It was a rather simplistic but effective way for them to distinguish who the good and bad guys were on their farm. And you could say that the folks at Hasbro kind of adopted a similar two-dimensional strategy in identifying who the heroes and villains were in their new world of transforming robots. At least in the very first year of Transformers, it was pretty much cut and dried. Cars good, and jets bad. <laughs> When the Transformers story unfolded in 1984, there was an obvious line drawn in the sand on who the good and bad guys were. The good guy, Autobots, were all cars, limited to just rolling around on the ground. And the bad guy, Decepticons, were pretty much everything else, but mostly jets, in the form of the Seekers, or at the very least, all the flying robots. While this clear differentiation was convenient to new fans, it didn't take very long for Hasbro to realize that sticking to this basic classification system would soon seriously hamper their toy line's marketability. And so the story goes, at least in the original G1 cartoon, after another loss to the Autobots, Decepticon leader Megatron comes to the conclusion that he needs more road warriors to battle Prime and company more effectively. And when Prime finds out about the Decepticon's plans, he counters it by building his own group of Sky Warriors. Intricate 80s storytelling at its finest. And just like that, we get the evil Stunticons and the heroic Aerialbots. But we'll get to the Stunticons in another episode, as for now, I'd just like to focus on the Aerialbots. The toys that would become the Aerialbots were originally set to be part of Diaclone's 1985 toy assortment, but when that fell through, were immediately repackaged and released in 1986 as part of a new wave of toys for the US runaway hit, the Transformers. And as part of Hasbro's three-pronged strategy, the Aerialbots also made their debuts in the comics being published by Marvel and the cartoon by Sunbow. While the Aerialbots weren't the only new sub-themes released that year, for me, they were my instant favorites because one, they were good guys, and two, they transformed into cool jets, and at the time, I was really into jets. Fighter jets, that is. I mean, what kid wasn't? But aside from transforming to their individual jet modes, the Aerialbots had a collective special ability, and that was to combine and form one bigger robot, the Autobot giant, Superion. But before we get to the big guy, let's meet the individual aerial bots, shall we? First up is their fearless, or is that fearful leader, Silverbolt, who transformed into a Concorde, which, while not a fighter jet per se, had a larger and a very distinctive shape that set him apart from the other four aerial bots. And despite transforming into a plane and having the ability to fly in both robot and alt mode, Silverbolt had this ironic fear of heights. Now, before you start judging the guy, I get it. If I was asked what type of superpower I would want, flying would be the last power in my wish list. Well, okay, maybe having two oversized maggots that eat up stuff and convert said stuff to energy for me would be a little lower. But given my own fear of heights, the last thing I would care about is soaring through the air. Anyway, it was this crippling fear of heights that led Prime to appoint Silverbolt as the leader of the Aerialbots, reasoning that the added responsibility of leadership would distract Silverbolt from his own fears. And to be fair, it worked, as Silverbolt has proven himself to be an effective and excellent leader. Next up is Air Raid, whom I pegged from the start as the best fighter of the group for the simple fact that he transformed into what I consider to be the best fighter jet of the time, the F-15 Eagle. Turns out my reasoning wasn't that far off since Air Raid is apparently the most combat capable of the team. Okay, to be more accurate, he's the most combat ready. I, I mean, he's fearless and is often the first one to jet into battle. Unfortunately though, usually without a strategic plan of attack or battle plan, which often gets him into more problems down the line. But hey, F-15s rock. And then we have Firefly, who transformed into an F-4 Phantom. Now I don't really care much for this guy, simply because his alt mode was one of the oldest jet fighter models of the bunch. I really wasn't much a fan of the Phantom, but as for Firefly per se, well, he was the daydreamer of the group, which often led him to being the worst flyer due to his carelessness from spacing out. I have to admit though, I do love the name Fireflight. And then there's Slingshit, I, I mean Slingshot, 
who transformed into a Harrier jet best known for its unique vertical takeoff and landing capabilities. And this guy was basically the, uh, how shall I put it, a-hole of the group. Slingshot is a loudmouth braggart oftentimes loudly pointing out others' faults and claiming their victories as his own. In reality though, it's just a facade to hide his own insecurities at being the smallest and slowest jet. Well, at the very least, he's a hard worker and somewhat loyal soldier. Next, we have my favorite member of the team, Skydive. Skydive is the smartest of the aerial bots, a resident nerd who prefers to read about great historical battles and the signs of air combat. He is definitely the fastest and the best flyer of the group, and most likely, all of the Autobots, period, as he is able to duplicate pretty much any aerial maneuver he sees within the limits of his design, like a Transformers version of Taskmaster. Which is all cool and all, but the real reason why I loved Skydive was that he was often depicted with a distinctively yellowish colored face, which, as an Asian, I identified with. Just kidding! I love the fact that he transformed into my favorite jet, the F-16 Falcon, complete with a cool dark gray and black color palette and lightning bolt designs on his wings. And finally, we have the big guy himself, Superion, who generally wasn't much of a personality, as was the case with most of the combiners. Superion's every action was basically driven by two simple goals. First, to destroy the Decepticons, and second, to protect others. With every other emotional aspect of each of the five individual aerial bots not relating to these two prime directives shoved deep down in his mind and suppressed. I guess this is why Superior can be mistaken for being simple-minded? And in a way, yes, maybe. But at the end of the day, he's just a goal-oriented sort of dude. Can't fault him for that. Anyway, like I said, being a combiner composed of fighter jets easily catapulted Superion to my number one favorite combiner. I mean, granted it was pretty slim pickings if you were like me and Autobot combiners were your thing. Defensor, the combined form of the Protectobots, was your only other option. As supposedly some of the very few Autobots who could outright fly, the aerial bots were quite the popular bunch. At least, they thought so. Enough for it to get to their heads, as in, in the original cartoon, they began outright questioning why they needed to protect the clearly inferior humans. And led by the resident team A-Hole Slingshot, the Aerobots went off on their own. Except Silverbolt, who merely followed the other guys with the intent of trying to convince them to return. Anyway, as the story goes, the aerial bots are led into a time machine trap set up by Megatron and the Decepticons that basically zaps the aerial bots 9 million years into the past during the golden age of Cybertron, long before the Autobots and Decepticons, and before the Great War. It's at this time wherein they meet and befriend a young dude named Orion Pax, his best friend Dion, and his girl Ariel, three regular bots working at an energy shipment facility who can't stop talking about their admiration over the new type of flying bots making the rounds in Cybertron. Anyway, these new flying bots make a surprise visit with their leader, Megatron, who then proceed to raid and pillage the Energon from the facility. Orion, Ariel, and Dion are severely injured in the fight, and once Megatron and company leave, the aerial bots arrive and bring the near-death Orion Pax to Alpha Trion, who rebuilds him into dun dun dun, Optimus Prime. Eventually, Ariel is also recovered and rebuilt into Alita One, and Dion, well, true to his name, Dion, dies. Poor guy. So yeah, in an odd time paradox, the aerial bots are built in the present by Optimus Prime and then travel back in time to save Orion Pax and serve as the catalysts in his rebirth as Optimus Prime. Oh, and their quick little time travel adventure also allowed them to witness the true evilness of the Decepticons. And so when they return to the present, the aerial bots reaffirm their side with the Autobots, with slingshot of all bots swearing at the retreating Megatron. You'll never get away from us, Megatron! We won't stop fighting till you're finished! You hear? And speaking of finished, our story is far from that as well. But before we go any further, how about taking a little time to help me out by leaving a like or a comment, or if you still haven't, a sub. Or better yet, why not try out being a friend of the Toy Shelf for even more exclusive goodies? All you gotta do is click on the join button on my channel's homepage. But either way, your support in any form is very much appreciated. So thank you. And now, 
back to the aerial bots, who despite being quite the popular sub-team upon their release, were quickly overshadowed by a number of more technical and terrifying Transformer characters, and by 1987, they were basically reduced to cannon fodder for the new Decepticon 6 changer, Six Shot, who took down each of the aerial bots using all of his unique alt modes in the cartoon. And the next year, they were basically deactivated in one shot by an under-base-powered Starscream in the original Marvel comics. And by around 1990, the original Aerobot toys were discontinued. Until they came back in 1994 as part of the short-lived Transformers Generation 2 revival, complete with brand spanking new colors and an awesome wrap. The aerial bots are taking their shot! Double Bolt Blast and Combaticon! They can all change to be rearranged! After that though, aside from a few name reuses for other characters and random one-off releases, there wasn't much in terms of classic aerial bot and superior toys in the market until 2015 when the first modern aerial bots mostly based on the original G1 team was released as part of the Combiner Wars toy line. I say mostly based because this team had a bit of a twist. Just like the original team, these aerial bots were composed of the leaders Silverbolt, Skydive, Air Raid, Firefly due to Hasbro losing the trademark to Fireflight, and the helicopter Alpha Bravo. It's pretty obvious that Hasbro did this to maximize production costs. See, the helicopter Alpha Bravo would later be reused and remolded into the future Protectobot Blades and the Combaticon Vortex. But since this switch out would ultimately enable Hasbro to make more toys, many collectors didn't mind. Okay, at least. I didn't. I mean, like I said, Slingshot was an a-hole, so I didn't miss him that much. What would be interesting though is how this change would play out in the then-running IDW comics where in the spirit of brand synergy, the Combiner Wars was also a thing. Actually, let's rewind a little bit before the Combiner Wars would break out. Apparently, at least in this continuity, the Aerial Bot team was composed of six members. Yup, Silverbolt, Firefly, Air Raid, Skydive, Slingshot, and Barrel Roll. Now, to their credit, Barrel Roll wasn't just a random character they made up on the spot. He was an existing obscure Transformer, a minicon released in 2010 that transformed into a jet that as a kid was a big favorite of mine and which I felt was unfortunately left out of the original Aerobot team. The iconic sweep-winged F-14 Tomcat made famous in the movie Top Gun. But awesome jet mode aside, I'm afraid that this is all there is to the guy as Barrel Roll was unceremoniously killed off in his debut issue as an Aerobot, vaporized in a terrorist bomb explosion. Poor Barrel Roll, we hardly knew thee. But he wouldn't be the only aerial bot casualty in the IDW continuity. In this Combiner Wars, Superion was unfortunately ripped in half by the OG Decepticon Combiner, Devastator. It was a cheap shot really, ripped up from behind, but nonetheless resulting in the death of Slingshot. And so when it came time to repairing the rest of the crew, two new Autobots volunteered to join the team. The aforementioned helicopter Alpha Bravo and the minibot Power Glide, who was also released in the Combiner Wars toy line with the ability to turn into a weapon for Superion. And speaking of the toy line, fortunately for completists, Takara Tomy, manufacturers of the Transformers in Japan, were apparently a bunch of G1 purists themselves and didn't buy this whole new members to maximize cost scheme of Hasbro. Instead, they went down another route, which was to repaint an existing mold, and in this case, Firefly into an official slingshot, or in this case, also due to trademark reasons, Quick Slinger. So while their solution wasn't perfect, it was better than what we got from Hasbro as Quick Slinger at least sported a newly sculpted head. Anyway, since we've moved on to toys, let's keep the barrel rolling on that topic, shall we? Like I said, there was quite a gap between the original classic aerial bots and the modern Combiner Wars version. So in 2013, a third-party company called TFC tried to fill that gap with their ambitious Wings of Your Butt. I mean, Wings of Uranus, much to the excitement of Superion fans everywhere. See, prior to <laughs> Uranus, TFC made history by releasing the very first ever third-party combiner, their take on Devastator called Hercules! And it was quite the solid success for its time, so you can imagine the excitement in the air when their next project, Uranus, was announced. Well, I missed out on Hercules, you could bet your ass I wouldn't miss out on U Uranus. Okay, okay, I'll stop. 
Unfortunately, TFC's Superion didn't quite turn out to be very superior. After getting over the sheer excitement of completing and assembling my very first ever combiner toy, I came to the realization that this set was a hot mess that could barely stand on its own. But despite all of its engineering flaws, Uranus did look quite impressive on the shelf. Sorry, I, I couldn't help it. But in the end, the reality was that he was just too big for a chug collection and, well, too flawed for a decent masterpiece option as well. So eventually, Uranus was sold off and Combiner Wars Superion took his place in my chug collection. And for my masterpiece display, I went with Zeta Toys Kronos, which I got in 2019. Just like TFC all those years ago, Zeta, or to be more precise, the Zeta designers working for another company, Toy World, also made third-party history by making what many consider to this day to be the ultimate masterpiece version of Devastator called Constructor. So given that, getting myself Kronos was basically a no-brainer. Kronos surpasses Uranus in pretty much every single way, with each aerial bot transforming into a jet matching the size of a masterpiece seeker. Kronos is a huge robot measuring almost 2 feet tall. He definitely scales better with my other masterpiece transformers, as he is meant to. And despite towering over his predecessor, Kronos is way more stable and more solidly built. True, I could nitpick that the designs of the individual aerial bots aren't accurate, but it's in the combined form of which he will be displayed that is the real selling point of this set. Anyway, moving on. It may have taken them four years since the release of their first aerial bot Skydive, dubbed Goose, in 2020, but my favorite third-party company, Fans Toys, finally completed their first foray into the masterpiece Combiner Wars with their take on Superion called Aetherion, with the release of their final aerial bot Slingshot, aka Jester, who, just like Slingshot, is dead. If you know, you know. And while I think Fans Toys offering as a whole does look superior to Zeta's Kronos, especially the individual aerial bots, I simply don't have an extra lung to sell on the black market for the funds to get him. So as far as I'm concerned, congratulations fans toys, but I'm sticking with Zeta. And speaking of Zeta, after Kronos, they moved on to their next major project, Bruticon. And while their take on the Combaticons should have been a sure buy for me as well, that decision wasn't quite as straightforward as it seemed. If you want to know more about my Bruticus Dilemma, check it out over here. Or if you want other Transformer stories, you can go over here. Either way, thanks for watching, and I hope you come back for more.